It was Maddie who actually said that. So Maddie said it, um, and it was kind of like more mentioning, like motioning to Kaylee too, like who was right next to her. So you could tell that like they obviously all were trying to keep Kaylee safe. They just said, yeah, you know, one of our friends and motioning to Kaylee that she'd been stalked recently. And it's not just a, a one-off thing, that this is apparently something that Kaylee had tons of issues with. That apparently she always had somebody who's constantly walking behind her like that. So, and it was more so at nighttime when they were out there drinking and stuff like that. Cause I asked them like, is it at school? And she's like, no, when I'm at night going out to the bars or coming back from the bars. And again, living she, down that way. Did she there. specifically mention the corner club? Not the corner club, but just in that general direction and stuff like that. So um, the only reason I, I would assume the corner club is because uh, that's the only bar that's down in that area anymore now, so. Looked like it was a perfect place to park a car. Dark, no ring cameras anywhere. Nobody would notice anything if a car was parked up there for a killer to go down and do what he so needs to do. Got a couple more things to show you. So I brought up the Chronicles of Olivia. So this is Chronicles of Olivia. We're looking at this one right here. I, I didn't play this in my last video, but I summarized it. But I actually want to play it for you today. It's only a minute. 46 days since the brutal murders and still no suspect. One of the victim's family members shares with me a new clue. Kaylee Gonzalez's sister Olivia shares with me something she found disturbing on the day of the murders. Here's a screenshot of Kaylee's LinkedIn account. Notice how Kaylee's account was active at 11.33 p.m. on November 13th. This was 12 hours after the 911 call was made and her account was deactivated. The content is unwanted or harmful. But I mean, obviously I didn't open it. Olivia also shows me an email where she messaged Moscow PD and asked them why they deleted Kaylee's LinkedIn. They replied and said it was illegal for them to do that, and it was not them. So the big question is, who was logged into Kaylee's LinkedIn, and why was it deleted? Kaylee had other social media accounts. Why her LinkedIn? It just doesn't make sense. What do you think? All right, so I have a lot to say about this. I, I've been digging, and... It's whether or not Kaylee has a stalker. And again, back to the Brat Norton's you real thing, you really have to listen precisely to exact words people are saying. Thank you for being here and your support. And I wanted to bring up Julianne said she loved Chronicles of Olivia too. But I'm so grateful you guys are joining me this morning. So when we talk about Kaylee and whether she had a stalker, everybody immediately goes to this. And if you don't know who this guy is, this was the original reason, this was one of the original sources we had for a stalker. So this guy told, uh, you know, I, I maybe I'll play you the clip. I'll paraphrase it for now and I'll pull it up afterwards. So basically this guy said that he owns a vape shop and Maddie and Kaylee and her friends were in there right before the crime happened. And they were walking in groups and this gentleman made a comment and he said, it's very nice that you walk in groups and protect each other. And Maddie spoke up and she said, well, one of us in our group has a stalker and they all motioned over to Kaylee. And Kaylee was very stoic about it, apparently. And this wasn't just on one occasion. They talked about it several times. And he brought this information to the police. I want to start with that story confirming that Kaylee had a stalker. So take me to that, that whole situation with the business in town and what you found out. Yeah, this was interesting, Ashley, and we didn't expect it. Uh, we went to this vape shop uh, in downtown Moscow uh, looking for surveillance video. I mean, we've been going all over the place just trying to get any new information. And, and the uh, manager actually knew Kaylee and Maddie. Um, they had been there six or seven times. Uh, and then he had a lot to say uh, about the potential of this stalker. 
Listen to what he told me. So uh, Keely and Maddie would both come in um, very happy, very friendly. You know, they always were just such a smile on their face. Just like, pretty much, the, you would say they're the light of the world, pretty much. You know, always happy, go lucky. Um, they always came in just chatting. They always came with a group, like I said. They um, probably had, say, four or five girls at most all the time to come in together. Um, and I, like I made, a, made a joke about it earlier. It was like, uh, you know, hey, you know, coming in together and stuff like that, you know, just, you know, it's nice to see you girls trying to stay safe. One of them more or less openly says, oh, yeah, we've had a front of ours be stalked before. So this is kind of why we all travel in a group like this. And just was like, it, was it Kaylee who said that? Do you remember? No, it was Maddie who actually said that. So Maddie said it, um, and it was kind of like more mentioning, like motioning to Kaylee too, like who was right next to her. So you could tell that like they obviously all were trying to keep Kaylee safe, you know, and to be there for her as good friends. And then yeah, to know that a few weeks later, now I won't see them, you know, anymore, anything like that. So it's so, so crazy. So how long before the murder about was that? Uh, three weeks. Three weeks before. Three weeks beforehand, because I was telling them I hope they had a good Thanksgiving break and everything like that, too, because I didn't know if I'd see them again. So, because with a lot of the times with the kids, with uh, the way after the pandemic, some of the kids leave and wave. So I was like, oh, I don't know if I'm going to see you this weekend or not. Hey, hope you have a great, you know, Thanksgiving with your family. And that was the last I saw them. Did they elaborate any more on the stalker comment? They more or less kept making the comment that it always seemed to happen either by the campus or down on Main Street. And the last time they, the Kaylee more or less made it sound like it seemed like it was down on Main Street and that the person was coming from like the, around the corner club area and then kind of like, I, as far as I remember, it's the guy who ended up like trying to go and talk to her and then he gave up on it and he ended up walking away. So she thought she was being stalked up to a certain point and then, then looked behind her and he was no longer behind her. So I just want to make sure so, that I get it right. So just yeah. tell me again exactly what you remember. Just more or less, uh, I made a joke about them being in a group and they just said, yeah, you know, one of our friends and motioning to Kaylee that she'd been stalked recently and so that had people constantly following her around. And it's not just a, a one-off thing, that this is apparently something that Kaylee had tons of issues with. That apparently she always had somebody who's constantly walking behind her like that. So, and it was more so at nighttime when they were out there drinking and stuff like that. Because I asked them, like, is it at school? And she's like, no when I'm at night going out to the bars or coming back from the bars. And again, did living she, down that way, Did she there. specifically mention the corner club? Not the corner club, but just in that general direction and stuff like that. So um, the only reason I, I would assume the corner club is because uh, that's the only bar that's down in that area anymore now. So uh, we used to have two, one with CJ's and then the corner club. It's just corner club now, then a whole block before it mingles, so. How many times did you see Kaylee and Maddie? Uh, How many times would they come to the store? Would I'd say? say now that I'm trying to think back in my head, I've only saw them maybe like six, seven times total. So I say probably since the start of this beginning of this year. So we know that police have looked in the, into the possibility um, of there being a stalker. Uh, latest we know from police is that they've never found anything to corroborate there actually being a stalker. They looked into an incident, Ashley might remember, from mid-October uh, from a business downtown and said uh, there, there was nothing there that they could figure out that, that it was actually a stalking incident. We're not sure if that's the same incident that Kaylee and Maddie were talking to the vape shop manager about, uh, but certainly interesting to hear him say that. It, it seemed like he had spoken with them multiple times and about that topic multiple times as well. What about surveillance video from his shop, that manager? Um, did he, was he asked for it? Does he have any? Would it be helpful anyway? Yeah, so he says police came to his shop a couple of days after the murders uh, and the video had been deleted there. Um, he doesn't have cameras on the outside, but I guess they were still interested in video on the inside since uh, the girls had been there so many times. Uh, but like so many other stories that, that we found, uh, you know, the video deletes after a week or two. What about the police? Did he tell the same story to the police that he told you? He says yes, and he, he mentioned that he has called the tip line um, and also that the police had been in the store. So it appears that, that they are aware of the story. Well, that's incredible because they had been saying that they hadn't found anything to corroborate it. And that sounds awfully like that fella heard them talk about concerns multiple times. Okay. Basically, I would say around December, the police came out with an official statement saying they tracked down 
the incident that they were referencing in this vape shop. So basically what happened was Kaylee was at a gas station and there were these two guys there. And one of the guys literally followed her. Like she walked out of the gas station to walk to her car. And this guy followed her all the way to her car. She turned around and it really startled her. And she thought that it, it he basically, it was like he was gonna approach her and then he stopped and turned around and didn't finish what he was saying. And the police actually tracked down these two guys through surveillance and questioned them. And basically what had happened was there were two guys trying to pick up women and one was like the wingman. And he saw how beautiful Kaylee was and wanted to approach her, but he got nervous and kind of chickened out last minute. So the police came and they said, we have, we have discredited this stalking incident for Kaylee, but I want you to pause because there was over a hundred tips saying that Kaylee had a stalker. Plus, we just saw Chronicles of Olivia literally saying how somebody was live in her LinkedIn and then deleted the account. Now, yes, that could have been the FBI. Law enforcement says it wasn't them. They could lie. I wouldn't think at this point they would continue a lie like that, but it, they're allowed to. It's within the rules. Um, FBI could have shut it down. But here's the thing is, Kaylee has other social medias. I mean, you can go onto TikTok and you can watch Kaylee's TikToks right now. Just her LinkedIn. There were other things. You, There's a computer screen that you can see having an error message right in the window the morning after the unalivings. And that's because they took the computer monitor. There's This video is not on YouTube, by the way. Let's bring in Ted Williams, former D.C. police detective, defense attorney, and a Fox News contributor. Uh, thank you so much for being with us, sir. I, I want to show you these pictures from the Daily Mail showing the crime scene. Uh, we can pull them up on our screen here so people can take a look. What's your takeaway when you look at this? It looks like a pretty typical scene for college students, but does the, the clutter, the disorganization, does that make it harder or easier to find evidence? Well, Jack, it makes it uh, more difficult for law enforcement, but you're right, it is a typical uh, college uh, room uh, that are shared by at least now we know six students. Uh, but when we look at this uh, complete scenario here, what is taking place, it is, uh, we get more from the family about what is taking place than we are getting from law enforcement. Uh, but when you look at the inside or the interior of that home, where you have really three stories, uh, and the, the killers, uh, killing took place on the second floor and on the third floor, it leads me to believe that it was someone who had some knowledge of that home. And the, if you uh, on the first floor, the only way you can get into this home is through the front door. If you're on the second floor, where or at least two of the individuals were killed, you can get in through the back door, which is a sliding glass door. Mm -hmm. uh, but whoever killed these four students uh, certainly would have been covered in blood. And I would hope that what the authorities would do is put out more information or uh, that the public can use other than just this targeting because this targeting has been very contradictory at one stage they said that the students or the house was not targeted if those were not the targets then what was or who was the target and so you've got a frustrated community out there that have not been given enough information yeah. Ted, in one of those pictures that, that we saw, um, there's a computer monitor that is still on. It's displaying an error message. But then in some of the other pictures, there's not very much that looks like it's been knocked over or ransacked. Does that, in your mind, help to rule out any motives? Well, I don't think it, they can rule out anything at this stage, uh, Jackie. Uh, I'm sure that law enforcement has taken a look at that computer there's all sorts of different things but if all that is true that would make kaylee the target but if it's not kaylee 
I got a couple comments here before I keep talking. Somebody left this comment, which I really think is insightful. They said, another creator, I'll come back and put her name, I can't think of it right now, pointed out that MPD had Maddie's parents in interviewing them almost immediately. The G's talked about it. They said they were waiting for the police to contact them after they talked to Maddie's parents, and all they got was an officer knocking at their door, informing them about it, saying that they'd be in touch. So that really made her and me think that Maddie was the target. Oh, good. I, I have so many notes on it. I should put it all together in a video. You remember the vape guy? It, it was an interesting video and it's, you have to put your full trust into law enforcement because he was, he was really shook up about what he heard from the girls. Good morning, Leslie and Billy. Leslie at Billy. I have a couple of other trending topics I really want to get to. Let me, I just want to look at my notes about Kaylee and make sure I told you. Okay, so there are a couple other things that I should say about this. All right, so. When you hear the word stalker, stalking is there's a line of escalation. Like if you were to look at somebody who was disturbed to the point where the unimaginable and unaliving happens there, it, it doesn't happen overnight. There's an escalation, but voyeurism should never be dismissed because voyeurism is in the chain of escalation. Voyeurism is there. And it, it, I don't even know if I don't think that I've ever heard of a serial killer who didn't commit that. So this house had so many clear angles. And I think that the person who um, exposed that so well to us is, is Drip Drop, Crime Circus Cole, because they showed us all these areas where there were clearings, where you had a clear shot right into Maddie and Kaylee's windows. Voyeurism would have been possible at that house. Somebody would be able to park and stare into that house. So that's part of the escalation. And the Mion escalation of that would be the stalking. So regarding those emails that have been going around, they, they tuned me into a couple of channels that are, are bringing in some insightful stuff. And I saw one photo of an FBI agent climbing in and out of, I believe it was Maddie's window one thing that forensic experts were saying, especially if you go back to that court TV document back in October, was that there should be some sort of evidence of stalking. But anyway, stop. the reason I bring that up is because the reason they were examining that window could indicate some sort of prior stalking or breaking in. So I can't say either way, but I'm just a documenter and I'm trying to document these things for you. 